Hello and welcome to 2v2 gameplay analysis here with Edna. We're playing some competitive uh, Diamond 3. Looks like we're on a team here with Dutch Smith and we're against another team on Orange. So, ping looks good. Let's go ahead and get started here. Decent kick off. Try and decide what you're going to do here uh, a little bit quicker. So, I think Dutch Smith is ready to try and get this ball if you kind of move out of the way. But right now, he's not sure if uh, you're planning to go for this ball. So, that results in some awkwardness. Didn't really need to flip there, but I, I get what you're trying to do. Get back to net. That was a very clear um, touch coming from the other team, so we should be a little more aware here. Once this happens, that guy's just waiting for it to drop down. And right about here, for sure, uh, you should realize you're getting beat to that ball turn back and then try and play off of his touch if you can. But we kind of jump out and that puts us out of the play for a while. That's good. Teammates should be able to follow this up. We can try and get this demo. Nice. No need to really jump there. Um, If you're a little quicker reaction, you could have just driven straight back and caught this ball on the wall. But I get it, you don't want it to roll out. Again, just a little bit of uh, blinders on going for this ball here. Um, I would have maybe tried to flip first and save some of your boost here. Because you use up all of your boost um, trying to get to this ball when you didn't really need to. Um, when you're starting out low momentum like that, you want to kind of think of it as like a kickoff. And use the kickoff strategy where you kind of boost a little bit and then do a, like a front flip. And that will give you the most bang for your buck in terms of momentum and conserving boost. So that's what I would have done here. Just uh, Get a little front flip in there, get a little bit of that uh, boost uh, action in there, and then you probably could have actually gotten to this ball instead of just straight up boosting at it. So at this point, teammate's in the corner, so we should kind of flip straight back, um, try and pick up some pads and see if we can interrupt this uh, dribble if uh, need be. Again, um, teammate's uh, ready now, so he's going for this ball. We don't want to cut him off. So at this point, uh, once you see him rotating the net, you should uh, get in behind him because he's coming out at this point. So right now he's going for that ball, so you should be kind of behind your teammate or looking out to see if uh, there's anyone coming in to contest this ball kind of check back and make sure where is this guy actually okay he died I guess but I guess just make sure that there's no one coming in here and uh, you'd be basically defending at that point if there was somebody coming in biggest thing is just uh, realize your teammates got this ball don't need to double commit on them so now we're kind of in an awkward situation Again, uh, realizing there's a touch coming from the other team, super important, uh, especially in doubles. You don't want to overcommit to something uh, if you're going to get beat. Uh, that's uh, how you get scored on. So we flipped towards this when we really didn't need to, and now we're out of the play again. Uh, we could try, if, try to get a back pass, maybe, but... Now we should just rotate out, pick up some pads, 
Um, I think teammate thought we were going for that, so now we gotta backtrack. Should have tried to pick up that boost still. I think teammate can could have handled this. We're really just sort of in the way this whole time because we don't have any boost. So we really should have just picked up this boost and then rotated in behind our teammate. We can't do anything from this position really and there's, there's no need to. We should just try to get boost. It's not really dangerous still even at this point so we don't really need to be sitting on the ball here. Worst case scenario is teammate comes out since we're not really doing anything and then gets beat and then there's an open net uh, which is almost what happens nice um, try there but again we still don't have any boost so if you don't have boost uh, and you're a first man you should try and stay close to the ball if you can but you want to avoid flipping unnecessarily because then it'll uh, take a long time to recover once you make that flip so just uh, be aware of that just uh, a little premature flipping off the wall here and now we gotta recover not the best uh, recovery but it flipped out pass from our teammate but we weren't really expecting it so we gotta be cautious kind of slow here on this challenge um, trying to buy time for our teammate to get back uh, but at this point like once he makes this flip here right here and then it's safe to assume he's uh, gonna be back he's not challenging this ball so we should be a little closer and be able to turn in on this and contest right here but we were actually too far away and now it's pretty easy for them to pop this over our heads if they wanted to like that so we should have been closer and, <coughs> and we should have uh, contested that ball where our teammate was rotating out team has a touch here now uh, enemy teams in awkward position so we I want to try our best to be ready for like a backboard pop by our teammate and try and read where this is going. Ends up being a goal. Alright. Interesting kickoff. Um, yeah, just not the best read off the wall here. Um, I think uh, on this kickoff, you want to communicate with your teammate and see what he plans to do. Um, let me go back here. So normally, uh, a common strat here would be to go for this left side boost, and then your teammate would try and get a kickoff that would go to the left and then you'd be able to follow that up um, but right here going backwards uh, doesn't really do a whole lot um, you could maybe go for like a cheating kickoff here and actually go up to that boost in front of you and then you could pick it up if if the ball stalls in the middle um, but uh... ball goes to the right uh, if we had flipped here instead of boosting again we probably could have actually gotten to this a lot quicker so always remember if you have low momentum uh, you should treat it as a kickoff and you know a little bit of boost to get you going and then do sort of like a boosty flip and uh, that'll get you a lot of uh, acceleration that way because there's there's no need for us to really be on the ground this entire time so we can afford to make that flip for the acceleration and not worry about you know not being able to make a play because we're in the middle of a flip it's kinda how you want to treat flips as uh, sources of acceleration but you don't want to use them all the time uh, when when you're trying to be ready to make a play because uh, it adds some recovery time uh, so we can hit this yep. Now, 
we have some time here. The other player got demoed, but we should also be on the lookout for ourselves uh, getting demoed here. Nice try keeping the ball close. Um, we were just a little slow. Uh, at this point, we really needed to hit this ball to the right and see if we can get to it before Frank uh, Kamikaze can. Um, of course, that guy just kind of spawned in the corner. So, yeah, we just need to cut around that a little quicker. He's going for a demo. Be aware of that. Yeah. Um, you see this guy coming in, so at this point you should assume that Dutch Smith is probably going to die, and you should assume a, a position uh, sort of in net um, to defend uh, the cross. Like Honda doesn't really know his teammates going for a demo, I don't think, so he's probably just planning to center this ball. So if we can rotate in quick and turn around, we can probably potentially get a free shot on net. Um, but Dutch actually doesn't die, so we should have probably let him go for that. So right right here, he, he was ready to go for that. We kind of double commit on him. We managed to somehow get it past both, and we scored again. So a couple kind of lucky goals this game. Again, kind of a weird kickoff here, um, and especially if this was was threes, I would I would say absolutely go for that corner boost uh, as quickly as possible. Um, and twos, um, it's uh, still an option, but sometimes you might want to turn back towards net. Um, but we, we should really be either cheating here or going for boost. Um, staying back is typically not a good strategy in my experience, but like at this point we should have been challenging this ball. Uh, but because we stayed back, it's a little awkward. Teammate was actually trying to flip into that boost. Um, a little bit of awareness there. Um, we probably should have left that for him instead of going for the boost. Uh, and if we had seen his touch, so right here if you realize he's hitting this ball, you could have tried to turn, um, maybe bump this guy, maybe follow up the, the play, or just uh, rotate in behind teammate. Would have been good as well. But now teammate doesn't have any boost to follow this up. Gets a decent touch though, so we should have been the one on this ball. Um, you wanted to get there way faster. So like right here, that's uh, our teammate's play. That's all he's got. And Honda's gonna try and take control of this, and our teammate's gonna be rotating back for uh, boost. We're the one with the boost, so we should be contesting this ball letting our teammate uh, go find boost. Otherwise, if we're not contesting the ball, teammate's going back to get boost, so no one on our team it will be challenging, and then uh, other team will just have free possession. So you want to try and contest this ball if possible. And there's plenty of time because it just went over that guy's head. So once you see it go over that guy's head, absolutely start flipping. Uh, towards where that ball is going and try and beat whoever is uh, there but you flip to the side instead of downfield for some reason so now we're way late to this ball managed to beat him though which is good we can take the boost nice teammate is gonna probably have a shot or a pass if you're in comms you can say hey you know I'm on the right if you turn quick here um, we can get a pass. Uh, so maybe uh, if you have comps with your teammate, you could work on, on that kind of stuff. Just have him cross the field to the right really fast, and then you can get an easy easy shot. But instead, teammate goes for the shot, and it's saved. But if he had done an infield pass there, well, that absolutely would have been a goal. And I think that's what you were hoping for. 
but just not the communication wasn't there. But you were in a good position for a pass if it did come. Watch out for the pinch. Yeah. So you just gotta be aware of what your enemy's options are in this play. He's coming off the wall. Like at this point, he's either getting a slow touch down or he's getting a pinch. There's really no other possible thing he could do. So you have to realize that and kind of position yourself away to be able to hit that, uh, get that pinch off the ground. But you turned in. Um, for some reason, you should have been facing away still, and then you could have easily shadowed that pinch and cleared it uh, to the left. But uh, didn't quite see it coming. So you want to be aware of where your teammate is on kickoff here. Um, and then in comms, you can decide what kind of strategy you want to take. A lot of people don't realize how powerful kickoff strategies are, um, especially if you're in comms. Um, it's fairly easy, especially in lower ranks. You can just pretty much, uh, you know, at least half the time you can get the ball to go in the direction that you want. And then all your teammate has to do is be ready for that, and you guys will immediately have possession off the kickoff. Um, which can be surprisingly effective. So he's a uh, back right. So we did get the ball to the right, which is good. And now we should just try and beat this guy since he's gunning it for the ball. We could pretty easily clear this in the corner and take a uh, corner boost, perhaps. And then we could uh, get a, a pass out to a teammate, perhaps. But you slowed down. Um, should have just kept going. Try and get a try and contest that ball try and uh, flip into it you know if you flipped from here you would easily uh, uh, have touched that ball first I think so again uh, just utilizing flips uh, effectively it's common th common theme here but just kind of flipped late on that didn't get a, a good challenge at this point probably should have still just grabbed the boost um, since you're there right now you have zero so uh, and then you go back. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of, uh, if you miss the boost, uh, just do what you're, you were planning to do with the boost anyway, um, because you just lose a lot of time by going back for the boost. Um, so like in this situation, after you missed here, like once you turned around, you should just go, uh, just, uh, Whatever you were planning to do, just go ahead and do it. Um, try not to hesitate and change your mind too much. So like here, even though you didn't get the corner boost, you could still flip towards this play and pick up that 12 pad. Maybe even get the side boost if they're really slow. Um, but just kind of having a presence in the play is, is very important because right now we're pretty far away. Uh, and we don't want to give them too much uh, free reign here and we want to have somebody contesting the ball so even if you're low boost um, you know just stick with uh, whatever play so we should have gone up there and they just completely fumbled that too so at this point we'd be at like the side boost and we could maybe get a shot or a pass even so uh, just kind of shows uh, how important it is to always have somebody contesting the ball so now Dutch Smith is going back. Hopefully he doesn't turn in on this, but we should be watching for that. Yeah, he's letting us go, so we can just kind of... Uh, I think uh, with both of them committed here, uh, it would not be a terrible play to just try and just flip into this uh, as hard as you can and see if you can get it to go off the corner or something. That was interesting, though. Um... <laughs> had the right idea there. That was uh, actually kind of nutty. They just like turned in and pinched it out. Um, don't go up the wall here. Um, so after this, just turn back. And actually you should turn to the left and get behind your teammate because he's going to want to come in and contest this ball. 
He's kind of far away, but if you start flipping out, he'll know that it's his turn to go. Um, keep that rotation up. By turning this way, he just literally can't go. But if you were on your rotation out behind him, he would be able to come in and, and contest that. So now we're finally going back. Teammate can come out at this point. But you see how much closer that ball got to your net because you uh, rotated up the wall instead of behind your teammate. That's just kind of the power of uh, proper rotation, I guess. Uh, yeah, teammates flipping out. Um, we could probably be a little closer here. Like, he's not doing anything super threatening. And teammates on his rotation back, so... If this ball does go past us, it's not a big deal. But we should be contesting this ball, right? No one is uh, on our team is currently contesting the ball. And uh, you pretty much always want to try and have someone contesting the ball. Um, that doesn't mean someone's always just blindly flipping at the ball. It could just mean someone is close to the ball, right? You can think of it as... Think of it as a 1v1 situation, right? If uh, Dutch Smith wasn't, you know, if if the two other players in the back weren't in this game, is this where you would want your car to be? Probably not, right? Like, you probably want to be a little bit closer to this ball. So just kind of keep that in mind. Like, we should have been up about where, closer to where Dutch uh, is here. And actually, could get a pinch out so this might not be a bad position at this point but so that happens uh, but if we had been closer contesting this ball could have got a could have beaten Honda maybe got a shot or a, a hit off the backboard just something um, and uh, if it had gone past us like I said our teammates are already rotating out so we could have just been been faster to this ball closer to the play but it does work out because he gets a weak touch. Maybe another. Nice try. Uh, this turn is suspicious. Uh, not really any need to go into their net here. Yeah, even if you bump this guy, that's a pretty tough angle for a teammate to get a shot. So I'm, I'm not sure what you're trying to do here. Again, you're just using too much boost. So... You had barely any momentum because you made that turn in the net. Now you should flip boost, thrust boost, and do a front flip. That'll get you out way faster than using all of your boost, right? So you have 66 here, 48, and now you have 0. So you went from 66 boost to 0, and all you did was meander about in the enemy's half, uh, enemy net. Whereas if you had just uh, taken this uh, 66 boost here, turned out of the net, done your boost and flip, do front flip, you'd be supersonic with probably like 6 boost. Um, and then you could rotate behind your teammate. So instead of 0 boost, you would have had 60 boost. Very, very important uh, to realize. to see how inefficient that play is. So now we're kind of scrambling. Teammate should be coming in, so if we can stall here, we kind of rotated towards the play, so that means we're forcing ourselves into first man position. So we have to try and make a play on this ball or potentially awkward uh, rotation around our teammate who I don't know where he would be right now. Hopefully sort of getting the net yeah so he's over here so we'd be okay uh, since our teammates position is good we, we'd be okay either trying to get our first man touch here uh, or do an awkward rotation of the backboard or you could even follow this ball a little bit longer and then make a play out that way several options there did get the touch eventually. A little awkward. This is kind of in front of your net, but you should try to trust your teammate here. Um, you know, you can start to position yourself in front of net just in case he can't get it. 
and then you would have been in position for a save or if uh, that got popped off the backboard you could have gone for a shot um, but double committing on the save is usually not a good idea so now we're all the way over here and again no one is contesting this ball this would have been you probably making a play if you uh, we hadn't double committed on the save so it's back to teammate again yeah this is good uh, we just have to beat this guy off the wall that's okay didn't quite win it but luckily uh, he misses didn't really need to jump for this uh, if you look at where your teammate is positioned he is going up the wall here uh, at some point. Okay, actually he was super slow, uh, so I retract that statement. I was kind of unsure if he can get to this, so I don't really mind you going for that. I thought he was going a little faster. So that's good. Nice touch. Get the boost. Rotate. That was a little bit sketch. I probably would have just let um, teammate He's coming off the wall, rotate in the net. He had an awkward recovery, so it ended up being fine that you went for that. But if he was a little better recovery, he probably would have been ready for this touch here. But not the worst, not the worst play, given how that worked out. A little misread here. I, I think we're just kind of panicking at this point because the ball has been in front of our net for so long. Just a little better uh, take off here. A little better angle up, up to that would have been good. Went for a boost that uh, wasn't there. No big deal. Should be flip back, try and shadow this. Teammate spawn there though. Ooh. That was uh, unexpected but they did absolutely nothing with that so we're good yeah at this point wait for this touch here okay he missed so we can go that's good so now we have zero boost if we can you could try to contest this ball if you had been a little faster you could have tried a wave dash and when you land up like this on the wall um, we kind of had to get that. Maybe didn't have to flip. If we didn't flip, might have had a better recovery. But since we did uh, flip, you have a couple options. Um, fastest option here is probably to just jump off the wall, uh, air roll your car, and then do a wave dash on the ground to push yourself in the ball's direction. Rather than doing the turn here, is a little bit slower. So if you've done the wave dash, even if uh, you did it like um, right here uh, or even here, just jump, do the wave dash or do a flip. When you have no boost, uh, you want to try and get close to the ball if you can. Try and get a 50 something to contest and that way uh, you can go let your teammate handle it, you can go get boost but because we didn't get anything like that now their team probably has a free possession unless we can bump this guy so we can't bump him so but he kinda gave the ball right back to us so it's all good teammate could have a shot nice try moving a little bit slow here this is very very risky so Honda's most likely beating you to this. Um, like I said, we were moving kind of slow here. We should have been a little more left side field here. It's unlikely it'll pop out to the middle. And if even if it does from here, we can easily get back to it before those guys can recover. Like it's probably going to stay somewhere on the left side at this point. You know, he gets a decent pass out actually, but it's kind of a, it didn't come too far from the wall, so like that guy's ready to pounce on that, so we should uh, probably be uh, shadowing this. 
maybe a fake challenge and then turn. But but actually challenging this is, is r fairly risky. We do get the touch though. Rotating back. We're rotating ball side again here. Ideally you would have rotated behind teammate, but that's the end of the game. Um, again, uh, biggest comment I have for you is just manage your boost better by utilizing effective flips. And uh, just real quick, I'm just going to hop in a free play and just kind of show you what I mean. Um, like I'm, I'm guessing you probably have kind of an idea of, of what I was talking about, but just to be crystal clear. So let me turn off unlimited boost. So let's take a look at these two types of kickoffs. Full boost at the ball. I was down to about 35 boosts there before I was able to hit the ball because this kickoff. Now let's take a look at. Uh, oh, I have to get 100 again. It's awkward. Let's start over. Let's do this one. So I'm gonna do the full boost again, but I'm gonna. Let's see. Best way to do this. Yeah, I'll just full boost at the ball. Just, so I, I ran out of boost pretty quick there. Didn't even get supersonic. Now let's try this again, but I'm going to do a flip. See how I got supersonic there? So I have 33, flip, supersonic. Whereas compared to this, no supersonic. So when you have no momentum, uh, a slight flick will help you out a whole lot. So what I do on these is just boost it a little bit. So let's say you're at 100 boost, right? Use maybe like 10 boost and then do your flip. So you can go into free play and just practice this. 10 boost, flip. Um, or if you're already at normal driving speed, you can watch this. So I'm just driving around, boost, supersonic. I only use, what, 25 boost? And I was just driving at normal speed. Just driving around, boost, supersonic. So I don't know what the minimum amount of boost is, but I, I know you can get it at least. There we go, I did that in 24 that time. So. With 24 or less boost going from regular driving speed, you can get to supersonic very, very quickly. So just top in free play, drive around. Uh, I didn't get it that time, but drive around, use a little bit of boost, do a power slide, slow down a little bit, boost, flip, and just practice uh, getting into supersonic from uh, a boost and then a flip. Um, very, very useful mechanic um, for getting speed without using too much boost. So, hope that was helpful for you. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, definitely let me know. Alright, thanks. Peace.